empty the chamber on them. And how do you do that? Four, six seconds, point eight, point feet, everything you got. Everything you got. Turn that shit up. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome to the Scoop World Order, South Florida Express Edition. I hope you guys are buckled up because this is about to be maybe the best show we've ever done. Because I'm so excited. I did the pre-show with a bunch of these guys. These guys are amazing. They're hilarious. Uh, nobody knows more about what's going on in college football than these guys. So uh, I'm going to get to them real quick. But a uh, real quick thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys. Uh, you know, again, subscribe, like the content, you know, leave us some comments. Who are you the most excited about? Is it Ennis? Is it Tate? We've got some monsters coming in from South Florida Express. But that being said, without further ado, I have the owner and manager, Brett Getz of South Florida Express. I have Ricky Williams, aka the rule of 99 on Twitter. I have Bill the Bank Green. So between these three guys, I've been dying laughing for the last 30 minutes of pre-show. That being said, gentlemen, how are you guys doing tonight? Everything We're good. good. Thanks man. for having you us on. All right. Oh, I'm gonna man. start off. I'm gonna start off with you, Bank, because these are yep. your guys. And the funny thing about Bank and and you know why I think Bank's the best national recruiting guy in the game is because he says, "Hey, my South Florida guys say this guy's going to Bama." And then everything else, I don't even listen to anything else because like, these South Florida guys know what's going on behind the scenes, in the scenes, around the circuit, around the, the country. So when Bank says that these guys say something's happening, it's probably going to happen. If they say D John's probably going to decommit, and go to Florida, it's probably going to happen. You know so. Bank, talk to me a little bit about your relationship, how you met Brett Getz. Um, obviously, you guys have a great relationship, long-term relationship. Uh, tell me a little bit about it, um, you know, it, it is how, how this has become such a, such a cool little uh, thing you guys got. Well, our introduction came about, man, 20 years ago when um, <clears throat> I got a phone call one day and didn't recognize the person at all, and it was Brett. And Brett said, Travis Howard is in class right now. He can't take your call, but he wants you to know that he just committed to Ohio State. And I thought, who the heck? I don't even know who this guy is. You know, I don't I didn't know Brett from the man on the moon, never heard of him, didn't know him. And sure enough, I did call, I put the news out. Then I called Travis back in about an hour, hour and a half, got the story. And then I wanted to call Brett back and you know, to thank him. And he, um, you know, we started talking and he was like, Hey, I got a big tryout thing coming this week. And, uh, I got some guys you might be interested in coming for my seven on seven. I didn't even know what seven on seven was at the time. I mean, it, it wasn't like it is today, believe me. But I mean, I went to that first tryout camp and I saw more talent. I mean, it was like being at the army all American game. It, it literally mm -hmm. was and kids coming from Georgia and all over Florida. And I had never seen anything like it. And that's when I met Ricky and Gino and, you know, developed a friendship with Brett and to watch what he's done for these kids. You know, we were just talking today about a kid who d does not have, did not end up with a college scholarship. And Brett used to Uber eat, which I'd never heard of Uber eats in the beginning. He used to Uber eats food to this kid. I mean, Brett's done so much for so many of these kids. And the nice thing is all the fan bases around the country hate him, but he sends people <laughs> everywhere, you know? And the, the, uh. the best part about Brett was when I knew he'd hit it big was about, it might've been 2015 or 2014, Miami played Louisville in a bowl game. Remember that, Brett? Yes, yeah. Teddy, yes. Teddy and Eli playing. And, and everybody on Twitter was calling it the Brett Bowl. Because Brett had about nine guys at Louisville. He had about 13 guys at Miami. They were all, it was the Brett Bowl. And it was like, oh, my God, he's dominating a bowl game now. And, I mean, it's gone from there. And, I mean, like right now, Brett's in, well, he was in favor with Ohio State, with Carnell Tate and uh, Brandon Ennis. Now Ohio State fans probably hate him because he's going to lose Dijon now. But, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, Brett, a couple of years ago, when Bama beats the dog crap out of Ohio State in a championship game, Brett, you had the whole secondary for Alabama, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Daniel Wright, Sertain. Daniel Wright, Battle. Uh, Jordan Battle. And who was the other one? Sertain. The, the, Josh oh, Joe. Josh Joe. Josh Joe. Sertain, Josh Joe, Battle. Josh Job's the one I forgot. Daniel yeah. Wright. But, I mean, you know, it's better for me to back out of here now and let these guys talk. I mean, I can say I've been with Brett. We've been on a little golf trip here up in the in the mountains in North Carolina the past couple of days. And the most fun thing for me is just hearing his phone calls. 
just overhearing the phone calls and then hey, ask, Ricky why, ask Ricky why he's not here. Wait a minute. The, the best thing I like is when Brett forgets to say, don't, don't write that. You know, when he doesn't <laughs> think to say that, then I go right to my phone and it's gone by then. I get you myself know, so. in trouble. <laughs> yeah. He forgets to say, don't write that. And it's over at that point. So I'm going to let these guys talk now, Kirk, because they're, they're unbelievable. Oh, God. Oh, I, I'm going to start with you, Brett. Then I'm going to get right into the rule of my man, Ricky. Uh, tell me, how, what made you get into seven on seven? You know, you found the team that ends up winning the national championship. I mean, you've got obviously outstanding receivers. You know, I loved uh, Bank and I watched him at camp at Ohio State last year and the competitiveness. I mean, these kids get off the plane, probably had a bag of Fritos on the plane. And then all of a sudden they're, they're competing and, you know, beating people down, you know, Brandon and you, you guys didn't know Carnell Tate at that point, but like Brandon was dominant. And I love watching the competitive drive, but what made you get into seven on seven football? Well, like you said, I had the competitive drive. Everything I do, mm-hmm. I'm just super competitive. But um, I started a, a little tackle football league on Miami Beach. Um, I, I grew up on Miami Beach and started a tackle football league for kids. And uh, after a while, I wasn't really working out. And uh, somebody had called me. I knew a lot of the kids. Uh, you know, I knew some of the kids down here that were, you know, but I followed all the recruiting on all your sites and I knew all the kids and, uh, somebody had called me, uh, AT and Sabino, actually, um, I knew him and he used to have all the writers call me cause he hated doing all the articles and all the interviews. So he had called me, I mean, uh, the coaches used to call me and the reporters and, uh, a guy from scout called me one time and said, Hey, would you want to do you know, a lot of kids down there, would you want to do a seven on seven team? And uh, I said, sure. I do. I, I do. By the way, I do. I just said, yes. And uh, I said, I'll figure it out later. So, uh, yeah. So, I, you know, I, I uh, said yes. And the tournament was going to be in like six weeks in Tampa. So um, I, I had a friend of mine, Ricardo Dixon, help me with it. And we decided to have 12 guys on offense, 12 on defense. And we would have practice every week. And, uh, you know, it starts with a quarterback. So, at the time, Geno Smith uh, was the top quarterback, not only in South Florida, but really nationally. And uh, I had called him and went over the idea with him about having an all-star team with all the best players in South Florida. And uh, he said, let's do it. So, <laughs> little I know, he said, can I bring a couple friends? One of them was Stedman Bailey that played with him in mm-hmm. West Virginia and played in the league yep. and was a really good player. Yeah. And uh, that team... Of the 24 guys, I think eight of them went on to make NFL rosters, mm-hmm. and it was it was it, it was a ton of fun. It's before social media, and then um, the following year, our tryout had you know we went from having like 30, 40 kids to having 100, and then 300, and then 500 kids, and it's become you know quite an event now with the tryouts. And there's a lot of teams, um, especially in South Florida. I mean, there's tons yeah. of teams, tons of talent. Uh, and, you know, we, we feel like we get most of the top kids down there. But what's happened over the last few years um, is that we've had a lot of kids inbox us now, national, really elite kids, and uh, ask us to play. And Ricky is our GM, and he handles a lot of the players <laughs> and getting recruiting. And, uh, and what are you laughing at, Bill? <laughs> and GM. So no, the- we, we've gone from so- South Florida Express – and by the way, the base of our team is South Florida kids to now we have the Malachi Nelsons, the Carnell Tates, uh, you know, uh, Sed Hawkins and Dylan guys Rayo. from all over. Um, we had yeah. Malik Muhammad, a DB out of Texas. That was phenomenal. And it just, they, they all want to play. And we, you know, we, we think we do a good thing for the kids and uh, Adidas sponsors us. So it's pretty great. We have great entertainment like Ricky with us. Yeah. Um. I assume that GM stands for get money. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, I want to bring you in, Max. I got to talk to you uh, last year at the camp, and you're hilarious. And I just, I love interacting with you on Twitter. I always say that I'm going to make a, I'm going to make shirts to say the Mid Ohio Express because you guys at South Florida Express are starting to get a lot more of your kids to come up here. But uh, tell me a little bit about how you know when a kid like Malachi Nelson reaches out to you, and you guys have a tournament in Las Vegas. How does that go down? Like, do they reach out to you? Do you research them? If it's, if it's a kid like Malachi, I'm sure you guys know who he is, and he's going to SC, and he's like a phenom. But 
how does it work and and how do you play that with kids that are on the roster like maybe a quarterback that's been with you all year but for the vegas tournament you guys really want to load up so you can beat the miami immortals beat some of your arch enemies uh how does that go uh well uh normally like most of them like they in they inbox the of uh, the sfe page but mm -hmm. me like you know like i just get on like the web and search 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 like that's how i found cornell tate like i didn't even know cornell but i seen it came across my Twitter, so I was looking. I, I watched the film. I was like, "Shit, this kid can play." <laughs> so, um, I called Brandon Ennis. So I'm like, "Brandy, do, do you know Carnell?" So he was like, "Yeah." So I was like, "Man, I want him to play with us. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in touch with him." So I say, "You know what? You call him." So Brandon called, and Carnell called back to like five seconds flat. Hey, coach, man, you know. Yeah, man, I'm interested to play, but I'm going to ask my mom, my dad, and my uncle about it. And, you know, so much <laughs> and so forth. So I was like, okay, well, give them my number. And so sure enough, the uncle called, and then the uncle called Brett, and, you know, we put it together. So, I mean, we like guys that are humble, but that can also play. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we always looking for talent, man. You know, yeah. this is what it is, the All Star 707, man. You know, you can't have. Feelings involved. The best want to play with the best. We have the best, and we, every tournament we in, we want to win. We don't want to lose a game. Like I'm mm -hmm. very competitive, also. Like I hate losing. Yep. I don't even want to lose the bread and nothing. And by the way, we we um, you know, just because a kid's good, it's great. But we're also looking for guys that take this seriously. We don't want guys that just want to travel and have yeah. fun and play around. We want guys that want to win. Because all you know, mm -hmm. we all volunteer, and we're all super competitive. Like, if you guys see us on the side, our coaches, man, we getting some heated crap in the hotel rooms, in our group chats about some disagreements on stuff that decisions we make. We want to win. If we're gonna do this and volunteer, we want to win. So we're looking for kids like Brandon Ennis is the most competitive person I've ever met. So mm -hmm. we want guys like that, that want to compete and want to win, and it means something to them. Mr. Kirk, yeah, I, yeah, yes, Mr. my man. Kirk, hold on, hold on. I, got I heard Brett say something about volunteer. I just want everybody to know I'm not volunteering no more. I'm going to the highest bidder. Whoever <laughs> wants the ruler, just DM me in the inbox, and we go talk. What's that? What's that? Cash app? What's that? PayPal? Yeah, cash app at the ruler, ruler ninety nine. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, wow. if you want the you want the talent. Call the ruler. So, the um, ruler. so Ricky, what NFL player does Brandon Innes most remind you of? Because I loved Brandon. He was up here at Ohio State me. last year. Good. Three guys, three guys, all in one: Heinz Ward, Debo Samuels, and Anquan Bolden. Those I love three that. Mix. Yes. It yeah, those guys are tough as nails. Those guys yes. like knock your teeth out. And it's like, yes. I love Brandon because he's ultra competitive. He's tough. Yes. I mean, and he is a guy that you put in the slot and he'll T-bone yes. some some middle yes. linebacker, some middle linebacker. Yeah, middle Randy line. doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He is, he, I, I love that kid. And it was funny because this time last year, I was with Bank and and I was talking to him and I was like, do we have any shot at this kid? He's like, no, nah, he's probably going to go to Georgia, Oklahoma. Commits to Oklahoma. You know, Lincoln takes off. Ends up at Ohio State. I was like, that's great. Cause I'm like, I love this kid because he's nasty. He plays nasty, plays physical. He's not scared to get dirty. I mean, he, I love that yeah. kid. I mean, he's, he's one of my favorite kids I've watched in camp ever. Um, real quick, I'm gonna go back to Bank. So, Bank, were you with these guys when you told you always told me the classic Florida story after they lost to Ole Miss? Were you with the South Florida Express guys? Uh boy, I er, might the, have been. Er, I Urban been Carlos, er, Urban and Carlos Dunlap and they lose. Well, that was when I was with Brett, and we were just talking about that today. I mm -hmm. I was down there, and I went with Brett, and I don't know how much I should say here. Um, <laughs> we had some Brett had some recruits with him, and I went. I, you know, I just was a like a like just just uh, I just went with Brett, and um, yeah, yeah. Well, so I, Florida I, I, won. I, Florida beat Arkansas. <laughs> And then they barely won, though. That was the that was Tebow's. Uh, I don't know last year, I think. But yeah. they barely beat him. And um, Brett got me in the locker room after the game. 
and we got to hear Urban's like post game speech to the team. And to this day, I wish I would have taped it. I'm sick. I didn't tape it. I never heard anything like it in my life. And um, yeah, that was amazing. Do you want to tape I mean, a locker room? They beat uh, Audi. Uh, <laughs> Audi. They, no, I... they beat Bobby Petrino that day. And Urban did an interview with Aaron Andrews after the game. We were standing right there. And he kind of smiled with Aaron Andrews. But the Gators played like crap that day. And they were like number one in the country. And as soon as that red light went off, the pit viper came out in him. And he wasn't smiling anymore. So he comes over, and there's about 20 dudes there waiting to get in the locker room after this game, like fans and stuff. And Urban, like, told the Florida State Patrolman, I want all these, um, we'll call them all these son of a guns out of here. Get them out of here right now. And then he put his hand on Brett, and he said, not you, though. You you and your guys are good. So (laughs) it was just it was crazy. It was one of the craziest locker room speeches I'd ever seen in my life. Like everybody was, I mean, it, it was hype. It yeah. was hype. And that was the year Carlos Dunlop got the DUI and they got beat by Bama. Yeah. Yeah. That's really really start- Oh Roll yeah. I, I know. Roll a no, tide right the there. Ruler. You got the ruler R- excited. Now. Roll a tide ruler. But no, uh, I was going to say, Ricky, you know, chime in a little bit. You've been around, Nick Saban, you've been around Urban Meyer, you too, Brett. You know, when you guys talk about intensity, coaching a seven-on-seven team, do you do, do you guys kind of take note of what the great ones do, the guys like Urban Meyer, the guys like Nick Saban? Because it's not it's not fun. I worked for Urban. I love Urban. Urban is one of my favorite guys. I'm going to have him on the podcast probably next week. But when you work for a man, you are working. It's not – there ain't no substitute teacher days, as me and Bank call it, you know, when, when you get to walk in and just kind of relax. Like, with Urban, every day is – or uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I love it. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> there he goes. I love it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> are you um, what what have you taken from the coaches you've been around, Brett, in terms of the intensity that they bring and how you coach your seven on seven team? You know, I I think it's just uh. Uh, you know, just, I mean, like I said before, we're looking for guys that are really competitive, you know, really good players, but very competitive and, and take this seriously because we do, you know, like I said, I mean, we have some pretty intense arguments amongst our coaches about things that we see and the things that we need to change. Uh, Ricky in Vegas was freaking out because there was a, we had a little incident. I'm not going to mention with, with yep. a guy that should have been playing wasn't and you know, just a little situation. And, Ricky was pissed and I got pissed at Ricky because he was going to sit on the sideline and not, pay. you know, it was just like, so the intensity, you know, we're all very intense about that, but Uh-oh. you know, my, my thing is, you know, being the, I, I guess the CEO of the program is also, I, I want to be, uh, uh, you know, um, I want the coach, I want the kids to enjoy it. You know, I, I don't, mm-hmm. it's not just a business. It's not a business. But we're not all business, I should say. But we also want to have a really good time and enjoy uh, being around. You know, I, I say it's like a little fraternity for these kids because, you know, they're being pressured by everybody around them, where to go to school, what to do. And then we're all together, and we don't talk about that stuff. And we all kid around. We have a good time. So, you know, we don't – it's – again, the intensity is there because we want to win. But we also want to have a good time and, uh, you know, and, and enjoy each other's company and – and have fun winning. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. Yeah, we I, I always... something, though. We got to go ahead. Something. What you got? Check my Twitter bio. It says I'm the CEO. Oh, sorry. Brett, I'm the CEO. Brett, Brett's a chairman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's all right, else. Rick, you are I'm whatever you want to be. I'm the CEO. I like Ricky's that. The CEO. I take. I'm the. I'm the ex CEO. Ricky took my job, um, and he's very good at it, but. Yeah, I mean, we're intense, man. We we want to win, and you know, it's you know, especially in South Florida, there's a lot of talent. We have a lot of teams. Oh yeah. So there, I mean, what goes on in South Florida alone with with the the shit talking between coaches and teams oh, and players, yeah. it gets pretty nasty. And uh, we want to beat their asses, and we a lot of them we like off the field, but when we play them, it's on. And we don't want to, you know, we want to be a team that's on top. I mean. After the Vegas thing, we lost to one of our rival teams in Vegas in the preliminary rounds. 
and which I didn't think we should have lost that game, and but we did. And uh, but you know, and they were laughing. They thought it was so funny that they beat us. But you know, we came home with the hardware, and uh, right. that's what's most important to us that we win. And you know, well, in the playoffs, and because it's an all-star team, and you know, people say, "How do you practice with kids all around the country?" Our practice is week tournaments every weekend. That's our practice. So yep. we don't really practice anymore. We just play, and we get, and, and you know, in Vegas, we had a couple new guys on the team where we had to, we had to make. It, and remember, there's a lot of egos too. So mm -hmm. two or three guys have to sit on the bench on each side of the ball. So we, you know, you know we got to balance these egos. It's it gets intense, and uh, but it's it's fun. Ricky, who would you say is your biggest rivals on the seven on seven circuit? Is the Immortals? Is it who else could it possibly be? The Florida Fire. Okay. Yeah, why, the now, why, really, why is I mean, that? They're down there, but they haven't. They, I don't think they've ever beat us. It's more okay. the Fire who has beat us in the past. The fight. Um, Immortals never beat us. Never ever. I mean, okay. they they consider themselves our biggest rival, but it's not really close. We got it. We we kick their ass every time we see them. There's Ricky's hoping tick. they're listening. There's my TikTok. I can't wait to put that on TikTok. That'll be great. You um <laughs> now what what makes the Florida Fire your rival? Is it because they've beaten you before? Is it because they talk a lot of shit? Like what is it? Like um, because it's not both. That. It's, it's, both. it's like they they're, they're the longest standing program down here. Um on a, on a on, a, on the flip side of us, um, I mean, like they had a couple of down years, but one thing I can say, they always show up. Like they don't run. Immortals don't always show up. Defcon don't always show up. But the fight right. of fire, win, lose, a draw. Talented, not talented. A lot of players, not a lot. They always show up. Yeah, fire is all. Yeah, and they're gonna talk shit, and they're yep. but they're gonna play hard. And yep. uh, yeah, you're right, Rich. I love that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask a question to, to each. It's gonna be the same question. Which program will benefit the most from the new NIL rules? You know how you can basically pay for kids. I'm gonna start with my man, the ruler, with Ricky, because I think that some of these schools are gonna pop up that people haven't heard of in a while. But Ricky, what schools benefit the most right now from the new NIL stuff? Are there any schools that are just flat out buying players right now? I won't say buying players. I, I'll put it in a nice way. They're compensating the players for their name, image, and likeness. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, so what, 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 what schools are the best at compensating a player for their name, image, and likeness? Right I mean, now? well. I'm glad we you're asking know. Ricky. That's not me. Oh, Ricky, Bobby, Ricky's going to be Bobby the leadoff hitter on this one. Miami is on top. Miami. Miami is on top right now. They're coming really? to guys really well. Mario's come in, put a put a plan in place to get the Canes back on top. So I'm interested to see. Um, the Texas schools, Texas, Texas A and M. I mean, Nick Nick Saban says Jimbo boy, he's a whole class. I mean, I hey. Mean. <laughs> hey. I mean, I, I don't know. I can only say what the go to coach said. Nick the Saban coach. said he did it. That's what he did. <laughs> hey, I mean, they got Shamar Stewart out of Miami. That was the, me and Ben's favorite guy we watched all summer last year, man. We saw that guy running around. I was like, oh my God. I can't even imagine what AM paid to get that kid out of South Florida, but it had to have been a lot. <laughs> um, you know, uh, you know, there's rumors with AM about Malachi. I mean, that'd be unbelievable if he flipped over there because I couldn't even imagine what he would cost. But oh, is there any, any truth to that, Darula? I. I a where there's smoke, there's always fire. I mean, the kid that went to Tennessee, the kid that went to Tennessee got eight million, right? That's what oh, I yeah. say. And and he's not even a, the number one quarterback in the nation. So if you got a guy that's in the same city and the guy getting eight, I mean, you're gonna want ten, right? Yeah, who's better? You think Nico's better than Malachi, or is Malachi better than Nico? Nah. Uh, nah, better. Yeah, I mean, Malachi's a quarterback in Vegas. I mean, it's probably for a reason because he's the number one guy, right? Yeah, but the kid Nico think... can play also. The, the Nico kid can, can also throw the ball, man. I mean, it all deep, 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 depends on their 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 growth going forward, but they should be like one and two. I got you. 
Brett, what about you? What is there a program that Ricky didn't name that you could see making That's a big it. jump over the next two years before the government cracks down on NIL and it's not just an open bidding war for players? Is there a program that you think will make a jump? Well, I think, I, I mean, if anything, it's going to give a lot of programs who want to be competitive, you know, to win a ring. I think it's going to give a lot of programs an opportunity. You know, it's going to create a little more parity. Right. You're going to have, mm -hmm. I see Louisville's getting kids from LA and, you know, there's, I think there's going to, I, I think there's going to be a lot of programs, you know, the programs that are real serious about that want to win are going to jump in there and use this whole gray area here to build up a roster. Well, Brett, I think what it's... about specifically, what about specifically, where do you see Ohio state in the NIL world? You know, I think, and I will say this, um, I, I mean, it's not a secret, and I, I, I think it's, uh, I, I think, first of all, it's Ohio State. So it's one of the premier programs historically um, for football, college football. So I, I think they're going to be extremely competitive. Uh, I will speak, I, I will tell you this, uh, Brandon and Carnell, who I'm very close with, you know, they were shown all kinds of different offers from a lot of different schools with this NIL, and they were never ever told before they committed what the numbers look like at Ohio State. They were told, you know, they were said, we want guys that wanna be at Ohio State. And if you come to Ohio State, our guys that are here, and you could talk to the players, because that's always the best thing as a recruit anyway, talk to the players about the program, about the coaches, and now talk to them about NIL. Are you guys getting taken care of? So I, I think, you know, when Brandon and Carnell made the commitment, they didn't really know numbers. Um, although they did talk to uh, Jax and they talked to Stroud and they talked to guys and asked them, you know, are we going to be good when we get here? Because, you know, with this NIL thing and this whole, I think the whole thing's a gray area right now, you know, um, you got to be competitive. You know, it's not Ohio state is not the only football team in America. So, and it's mm -hmm. not, the, you know, they loved heartline. Uh, they love coach day. And that's a, that was a big part of their decision. So really for like those two guys, it didn't come down to, I mean, yes, they want to get paid like everybody else, but it mm -hmm. didn't come down to NIL specifically came down to heartline and the program and coach day. But they also were, you know, talk to the players and did their homework and know right. that they'll be taken care of. Right. And also Tate and Ennis were, were NIL type kids. Put, take Ohio State out of the equation. You know, uh, they, they were they were big time NIL kids. So do you think talking to Jackson Smith and Jigba, talking to CJ Stroud about where they are right now, which is in a good spot, do you think that's what locked it in? Oh uh, yeah, no, I, I think for sure. I mean, well, I listen. I think relationships. Well, of course, I don't know with NIL. I don't know if relationships mean anything anymore. But I think the relationship they had with, and the the job that Brian Hartline did with them was instrumental in really making this all work. And again, it's Ohio State, right? Yeah. So you can't go wrong. You can't say nobody can say you picked a horrible program, right? So. You know, it's, it's, you know, listen, not every kid wants to stay home. You know, Brandon will still get, listen, Miami's not going to give up on Brandon Ennis. I can promise you that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and a bunch of, I'm sure Alabama won't give up on Brandon Ennis. So, you know, listen, um, you know, it's very hard. You know, my daughter's in 11th grade right now, and we're deciding what college she's going to go to. And she doesn't even play sports, but, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, this whole NIL thing, like I said, I mean, Man, it makes kids think. And I'll, I'll say this, and I'm not trying to scare anybody about Brandon or Carnell or anybody, but signing day is going to be real interesting with NIL. Real yeah. interesting. And I think, and, and I also think it could cause problems on rosters in colleges. Ooh. You know, I think, you know, you got a guy like, I'll just use Nico because uh, um, uh, Ricky brought it up. You know, a guy gets $8 million to go to Tennessee – what if there's another quarterback there that's real good and then they're being forced to play the $8 million man and how does the other kid feel? And then all his other teammates that came into his class, 
I just think the whole thing is to be real interesting sitting back and watching this. But signing day could be real, real interesting uh, for all programs, not just Ohio State, Alabama, Miami. I mean, we're going to see, you know, commitments are great. But what I've heard from college coaches, <laughs> uh, college coach in the past, a commitment means that we're interested. <laughs> and then I don't think the last yeah. thing, the one thing I wanted to ask also, and I don't know if you want to say anything. And I'm not trying to put you on the spot. You know I would never do that to you. <laughs> uh, do you want do you want to comment to the Ohio State fans about Dijon Johnson, or would you rather not? I'm not trying to force you to. I'm just yeah, I, I would be happy. Yeah, I don't. You know. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, you know, again with this uh, NIL situation. Um, I think Ohio State and everything, and I, I, I know this because I know the kids that were being recruited, especially for my team, they did it. You know, you're not really supposed to use it for recruiting. The kids did not know the numbers. Like I said, Brandon Tate did not know the numbers. Now, other teams out there, I guess, are talking numbers, whether it's the school or uh, the companies that are paying. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, again, but I think in his situation – and, uh, you know, I, I think it's a situation where uh, he can use some funding in his life, you know, uh, monetarily. I, I don't think things are so easy. And I think um, he, lo- by the way, I'll tell you this, he loves Ohio State. But I think the competitiveness now of this NIL situation uh, really made him think um, about what's best for his family. So would you say- would you agree with me? Because I wrote this week that Ohio State with Tim Walton and Perry Iliano, the DB coaches, they did not get out recruited. No, no, no. Is that fair? No. Is that fair to no. say? Uh, very fair to say. Yeah. No, Dijon loved loves Ohio State, <laughs> loves the coaches. Again, this you know I know fans don't want to hear this, but. The fans also, I'm sure a lot of them are business people and have to take care of their families. And there's times that, you know, w- what comes first is taking care of your family and uh, creating sometimes a better situation for your family. I mean, even not just NIL stuff, but being able to go see your kid play, you know, and being able to afford to drive from Tampa to, let's say it's Gainesville or Miami, mm-hmm. wherever he goes, or you know, how are we going to buy plane tickets for mom, dad, sister, brother, whoever it is? If you know, again, that's that's tough, but that sometimes can be figured out. But again, when you come from sometimes tougher situations economically, you you know you want to do what's best to take care of your family. And I think uh, he you know he loves Ohio State. I think the coaches did an amazing job. He speaks really highly of those guys. And uh, I think this is one of those things, you know, you know, at a 17 year old kid, this is one of those first really hard big boy decisions that you have to make. And uh, I think it's really hard for him. All right. right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. I I mean, like, like I said, I, I grew up with a single, my mom, my dad, when I was young. So it's like, I never fault a kid that wants to stay home and his parents can drive an hour or two hours to see him play instead of flying. Cause it gets real expensive. And as it expand the playoffs, you had a conference championship game. Yeah. You know, Ohio State, you know, if his parents have to fly to Indy for the conference championship game, then fly to the Rose Bowl, or they're going to play three rounds of playoff games. I mean, you got to take out a second mortgage to be able to afford the travel. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. Especially so, now, playing tickets yeah. are a fortune. Oh, God. And by the way, half of them get canceled now anyway. So it's like. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, it, it I, really. You got to take, you know, every, again, everybody could take their. Ohio State hat off or their fan hat and put on the family person hat and say, look, you know, sometimes people just have to do what's best for their family. And I think in this case, I I think Dijon is making the right decision. Yeah. Like taking care of your family is never a bad, I think that's what everyone should do. See what's in the best interest of their family. And I I don't, I don't follow it for that at all. What about you, Ricky? Show me the money. (laughs) (laughs) It's going to be my new ringtone right there. Speaking of show me the money. So, Ricky, I'm going to stick with you here. So, Sam Bank, do you know Sam Spiegelman? Spiegelman from On3? 
Was he a no. two four seven guy? He's he's a recruiting guy. Um, yeah. Yet yesterday at two o'clock, he predicted Richard Young to Oregon. <laughs> at five o'clock, Richard Young committed to Alabama. So I have no idea why a national recruiting guy would pick Richard Young to go to Oregon when the entire universe knew that he's going to Bama. But you know, was there smoke? Was did Oregon make an NIL offer? Then Saban comes in and says, "Hey, we'll match that, and you get to play at Bama." Or you know how you know with, with how some of this craziness goes, Ricky? Could that have it happened? It could have been. To, it I mean, could have been that, or the guy could have got some wrong information. Maybe he listened to a guy that he shouldn't yeah. listen to, like Bill listened to Brett, like Bill should listen to Brett. <laughs> I, don't, I don't listen to Brett. I listen to the ruler. I don't listen to Brett. Yeah, we got the ruler and Gino, man. Bank, I'm gonna have you follow up on that. The Richard Young thing, no surprise, commits to Bama. Um. But a national guy predicting him to Oregon like three hours before the commitment. Like, I mean, have you ever seen anything like that before? Yeah, I, I think he must have got like, I think Ricky's correct there. I think he got some bad information. And, yeah. you know, sometimes in this business, you can get somebody can try to make oh. you look bad. You have to know you have to know who you're trusting in this business. Like, oh, that's, Ricky, that's what happened to you, Bill. People just make you look bad all the time. Well, I think that's just my plastic surgeon. I blame him. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, it almost sounds to me, Kirk, like somebody set him up. Like somebody set this dude up, wanted to embarrass him. But I don't know. You know, it, it happens. I mean, you didn't see me predicting Richard Young to Oregon. I know that. Hey, I mean, you might have oh, been one oh. of Ohio State guys that's mad because, <laughs> because on three says that Brandon is in the top 10 wide receiver in the nation. Oh yeah, I want I want your thoughts on that. Uh, give me your thoughts on on three, Ricky. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Since they said that, what did they what did they make Brandon a three star and like the ninety fifth rated receiver in the country or something like that? What are your thoughts on on three right now? they I call them own bullshit because <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what they are own bullshit. It's no way you could tell me those ten guys listed nine all ten are better than Brandon. I see a guy range no that, that 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 I know personally is not better than Brandon. I mean, I see them every week compete against each other, and it, and it ain't close. Not close at all. Yeah, I mean, you guys have to see 60, 70 percent of the top receivers in the country at these seven on seven 100%. tournaments. Like you, I'll you guys you, know is legit. Good. Whatever you know, he's top three or four or five. But Brandon's up there with Carnell too, you know, and. Uh, Man, they had Carnell ranked eighth, man. Eight. You can't tell me <laughs> seven receivers been a nation better than Carnell Tate. It's it's it is wild how some of this stuff shakes out. Uh was your first time seeing Carnell in person when you came up to camp last year, Ricky, when he was running around with Brandon? Did he had no South Florida gear on at the time? But was that your first time you saw him run around in I person? Even, I didn't even know him then. Really? I met him that summer. On on I was on twitter and he posted something and somebody re re retweeted it that i'll follow so i'm like img the kid going img so I, I looked at the film right so i never said nothing and then after that first game when he played against american heritage i started following him then right i didn't Got even it. know he was from chicago i didn't even know anything so after the season which was maybe like in november i say let me try something so that's when i Went on the move and you you know got it popping with him, but um man, Carnell's a great kid, man. He's Super. the most like I say, he's the most college ready kid. Far as far as is is always business. Like he's gonna be on time. He's gonna be in bed on time. He's gonna wake <laughs> up on time. He's gonna eat on time. Like you don't have to worry about him getting nowhere on time because he's gonna be there. I love Very it. true. I love it. I, uh, well, man, this has been a blast, guys. This, I mean, this time is flying by on this. I want to be cognizant of you guys' time tonight. Uh, yeah, we're good. Any, any, uh, finally, <laughs> <That's laughs> <Brett. laughs> I took it down. <laughs> Nobody asked you shit, Brett. Nobody asked you nothing. <laughs> Shut up, Brett. So, what, what, what is the future of the South Florida Express? Like, as you guys, you know, it's, you guys kind of have, it's kind of a funky thing because before these kids' senior year, 
you kind of graduate them in the summer, correct? So like Brandon and Carnell played their last game for South Florida Express as they go on to their high school career. And I imagine they'll graduate early and be at Ohio State in January. How do you restock? Um, obviously with, with Carnell and Brandon, those guys give you guys a lot of notoriety because they're such dominant players. But, uh, you know, being the GM, Ricky, how do you restock your roster? Is it, you know, obviously tryouts? Is it, you know, finding kids on Huddle, on Instagram, Twitter? Uh, how do you restock this roster when you lose kids that are this dominant? Well, what I really like to do is I like to start early. You know, mm -hmm. like you get the eighth graders and the ninth graders in and they watch those guys and they want to be like those guys. You know, mm -hmm. like, like, um, God bless the dead, Sam Bruce. Like every mm -hmm. kid in this area that's coming up now, like Brandon and Nathaniel Joseph, they, they all emit Sam Bruce. They all wanted to be like him. So, so guys like that, now, nah, now, nah, guess, guess what now? Jeremiah but, Smith, watch yep. Brandon. Jeremiah is going to be probably more, more recruited than Brandon. I mean, you can't teach what he has. He's long. He's fast. He's quiet. Not a problem child. Does everything right. You know? So, mm -hmm. so basically you just keep adding 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 no matter how young they are you just keep adding them and you know you just hope that they follow the protocol you know mm -hmm. er everyone stays even kill you know no one try to be bigger than the program and you know you just want guys like that you, you don't want selfish guys like i hate selfish i hate i guys it's never about i it's always about the team what about jojo trader give me a little rundown on him as well so those are two guys that obviously ohio State fans trader are Jojo, Jojo yep. is Travis 2.0. Travis Hunter. Hunter. Yeah, Travis Hunter 2.0. I mean, in in my eyes, he's a five-star DB. I mean, you know if hands the buts, but he wants to play receiver. So, so I mean, would I be surprised to see him move to DB later on when he get to call it? No. But school's gonna give him a chance to play wide receiver. But like I tell kids, it's always money and bet peddling. You know why? Because everybody wants to play receiver. Everybody wants oh. to play running back. Nobody wants to cover the wide receiver. That's why DBs last longer and they get paid more. You're right. I mean, you look at the, the top five corner salaries, and they're, I mean, Jalen Ramsey's making $26 million this year. And no receiver's yeah. touching that right now. I mean, that's exactly. crazy money. Exactly. You know? Yeah, so I I agree with that. If a kid's got if it, if he's the same at both, man, I'd be like, learn how to play DB. I'm telling you that that is the spot. You can play corner. Every team's playing three corners. Ninety percent of the downs now they're nickel the entire game. So yep, you know they it just makes sense. Yep. Yeah, exactly. This um, was not a position in the NFL. No, it's the starting lineup now. You yep. know, I mean, I mean that's what it is. Brett, what's What's the future of South Florida Express? Are we going to get you guys up to camp next year? That's another good question. I don't know. I know you guys yeah, have a busy had, summer uh, schedule. Well, we've had a, a, you know, we really enjoy. We've been up there. Ricky's, Ricky's been up there two summers in a row. I came up. Um, well, Ricky came up for spring. I came up for spring. Um, yeah, you know what? If the kids, you know, we we talked. We took them all over this year. We were at USC, UCLA, Florida State, Miami. Uh, Maryland, we've been all over, uh, but the Ohio State trip has been great. You know, I have a good relationship with Mark Pantone. I've known mm -hmm. Mark for a really long time, going back to Florida, and he's been great. He's been a great host and really accommodating. And, um, you know, so, you know, if the kids are, if we have enough kids that are interested in the program, we try to make it happen. I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, our, our program is, uh, we met uh, Dylan Riola last, uh, we were there for spring, we met Dylan. And, um, you know, he had expressed some interest in playing with us. And um, so now he's going to come to our tryout and uh, he'll be there in our in our uh, December tryout. And uh, we're going to take two quarterbacks. So, you know, with Dylan's talent and everything we see, he'll, you know, probably be one of them. And we'll take a second quarterback as well. Um, you know, I, we got we, we have Jojo, we have JJ uh, and we have, you know, and, and I'll give Ricky credit for this. Ricky kept pushing me to have this year a twenty, a class of twenty three team and a twenty four team, and we also have a fifteen U and a fourteen U team because we need a pipeline to keep these kids interested and not go to all the programs, but to stay with our program. 
And, uh, you know, and Ricky kept saying, we need a 24 program. And, you know, I said, well, you know, not always two teams kind of, people don't want to think they play for the B team, but this year worked out great because those kids on the 24 team, they grew up all together playing for a lot of them for the Miami Gardens Ravens, which was this great team that won all these championships as little kids. So we re- it really was a 24 team and a 23 team. And then we went to Vegas. We took some of our top 24 kids and brought them up like JJ's and the, and, uh, and the, uh, JJ's and the JoJo's and let them play with the big boys. And, you know, they held their own. I, I love it. Yeah. Cause then it's like the, it's the survival of the fittest when you go to Vegas and you got to have the top dogs. You got to have your top five star juniors along with your seniors. But uh, I yeah. love what you guys do. I think it's fantastic. I think it's great for these kids because, you know, the skill development that they get, um, again, bank and I harp as much as anybody on the lack of seven on seven in Ohio. So we're always going to be behind. Yeah, we were talking about are... it today. No seven on seven uh, and no spring. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's stupid because like these kids get so much skill development because when you guys show up to these tournaments, like you guys got to show out or else you guys are going to get blown up. I mean, these kids got to compete. Well, they can't just great, show up. And... It's a great stage for these kids. You know, Absolutely. Bill was telling me today when Irving came in, you know, he was trying to get the state to do spring football and they turned him down. And I, I'm shocked. You know, Ohio has such great coaching, I think, at the high school levels. Yeah. But I, I'm just surprised. Like, man, I, it's crazy. They don't play seven on seven which is just a fun competitive thing and kids get better and it gives oh, the yeah. kids a great stage for exposure. Yeah. Hey, it's, Kurt, it's really Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, Kurt, if up? I come back to Ohio state, this is what I need. I need you to get this out there. This is what I need. Oh boy. I need, I need a lifetime membership to the chicken place that down the street. What's the name of the place, Brett? Oh, Kane's. Kane's? Absolutely. Yeah, they gotta yeah, have a Ricky, absolutely. They gotta have a, a Ricky special on the menu. I, I need. Is a that like 50, 50, 50 tenders and like a sweet tea or something like that? No, no, no. no Tell no, us what no, that no, special tea. would be. I want to hear this. Yeah, I want to hey, hear this. All right, this is it. I need ten tenders, a basket <laughs> of fries, and two chicken sandwiches with extra sauce on the side. In a large Wait, drink. Wait, a really large coat. In a large right? drink, yeah, in a large drink. I need I need that on the menu. I, I need this I need to say Ricky's for thirteen ninety nine. That's what I need. Thirteen ninety nine. They're gonna be losing their behinds on the that. Rula. <laughs> the, the Rula. The Rula. The Rula. Yeah, yeah, the Rula special. Then, Sir, then, then for the Sir, dinner my... place. The dinner place. What's the name of the place we went to, Brett? Oh God, the steak. Where'd you go, Hyde, um, Hyde Park? No. The other one, uh, God, is it a Jeff, Ru- Je- Jeff, Jeff Ruby's Hyde yes, Park? Yes, yes. Jeff yes. Ruby's. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Ruby's. I need a Ricky's, a Ricky Ruby's on the menu. A Ricky's ribeye. <laughs> so what, what is so, yeah. so? So what's a that? What was it? With a lobster tail. Yes, sir. And, and anything else? You need like two Colombians from Tootsie's there too to serve it to hey, you? Or no? that'll work. Hey, that'll work. <laughs> I need to did he say Tootsie's? <laughs> Where yeah, I know, did, did I I played for, I played for the Dolphins in 08. You guys ain't hip. I know what Tootsie's is. I've been there. I've been upstairs. I've been up the elevator. I've never I get been, it. but I heard it's fun. Uh, it is really fun. It's great. <laughs> Why is it so great? Hey, I don't I don't I don't get it with the South Florida Express. This takes a couple Colombians and some lobster tails. It's easy. You know? Yes, sir. That Coach Day could figure out how to make that special work. If Ricky could deliver JJ and JoJo. Uh-oh. Hey, I'm telling you. Our viewership just spiked like that. Listen, yeah. this is what I want to say. Ricky can't huh. deliver anybody but Ricky. I can't deliver anybody but Ricky. But what I can say is, I think Coach Tony Alfred is my favorite coach on staff. That's my guy. Really? Over Heartline? Wow. Yeah, that's my guy. Too. I mean, Heartline. Hot- Hotline is great, but Tony Alfred showed me something when he took me in that room, man. Like, like, like he's he's willing to go all out. He showed that's, you that's how to take. He showed you how to take a nap after you had a six-hour presentation that you got about <laughs> how to pass block better. And I hope he got you a pillow and a chicken tender Ricky meal because I was hey, like, man, yeah. This what he I got like, me. He I've sat in those meetings, man. That after was it. 
Oh my God, you're probably sitting there dying. Stomach probably just. What about screaming. Larry Johnson, Rick? I thought you love Larry. Oh, that's my guy. Oh, oh, oh that's a living legend. That's oh, a legend yeah. right now. He's the best, man. All Ricky wanted yeah. was a number nine. He wanted to wear a ninety-nine with the Larry Johnson picture. That's all I wanted. That's all I wanted. Oh, I know. Now, I made now a... you want specials at Canes. You want specials at Rubies. Oh, oh, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I want one, one more thing, and I'm. And I'll be finished. All right. I, I need Ryan Day's son on my on my fifteen U team, the quarterback. He could RJ. Oh, you want RJ yeah, on your I team on fifteen U? You gotta develop him. You gotta let him throw to those the ballers. Okay. All right. You got you and Gino coaching him up. I love that. Now, so. as long as as long as uh, RJ Day is playing in the seven on seven tournaments, which he can't do because he's an Ohioan. But if he could do that then Ryan Day would be able to go to all those events. And there is a coach who let his kid play in those events so he could go watch and play. Oh, yeah. Brett, Brett, did he ever watch his kid one time? No. I don't think no. I don't know. I think, I think that coach's off. name is uh, Jumbo or <laughs> Jumbo. Jumbo. I can't remember. I don't, I don't even know his name. but Yeah, uh, I don't know. I forgot. By the way, I name. will tell you this thing. It was really smart, and I think oh, we're yeah. see more of that down the pipeline. That is Jimbo that is ex- Jimbo ain't dumb. In in terms of sophistication of of techniques like that, something that Jumbo or whatever we're gonna call him <laughs> did. Brett, are there any coaches that are just you know you're like wow that's a really smart thing that they did there something like that because that is. That's genius. If you can go to all these seven on seven tournaments because your kid's playing and you get to scout four five star wide receivers, Q Fletcher at running back, you yeah. know, okay. I mean, are are there any other coaches that are that crafty or creative? I mean, has there ever been another move like that where you're like, damn, that's really smart? I mean, that's like a genius well, yeah, level I mean, move. Well, I will say, you know, he did mention was Jimbo and Jimbo, I mean, there was nothing wrong with it. He did the, you know, he went under, his son played on a team and he watched and was able to see all these guys out there. And, you know, did I, I know a lot of negative kid, people. Brad? With, huh? Brad, did he ever watch his kid throw one ball? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Sometimes it's trouble, Bill. Oh, um, God. But yeah, I mean, I saw, I was at a quarterback retreat in Santa Monica a um, few, I don't know, a month or two ago. And, uh, you know, uh, I, there was, uh, uh, what's his name? Um, Old Miss coach. I, 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 Kiffin? His, Kiffin was there with his kid was at the camp. Yeah. And he was surrounded by all the top quarterbacks in the country. But I will say, I get uh, Rashada went up to him because his son, his Rashada's brother was committed to Ole Miss. And they were recruiting him, and Rashada went up to him at the camp, and he said, "I can't talk to you." <laughs> so I can you know, so Kim wow. definitely did the right, the, what's legally the right thing to do, but he was able to watch, and you know, it's um, I think you'll see more of that, and I, uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, listen, AU basketball has coaches at every oh, event. God, yeah. So why not? Ha- I mean, it's not. First of all, all the coaches are talking to the reporters anyway that they have relationships with and say, Hey, tell me who could play, who could do this, who could do that. Or how did, you know, Johnny do or whatever. So, I mean, come on, let them come out. You're letting them pay players with NIL. Let them come out and watch the kids themselves. Yeah. I, I'd be all for that. Cause I think it just as it's more exposure for the kids. You know, there might yeah. be some kid. I mean, cause you know, kids like, you know, Carnell and Brandon, like they're going to have 50 offers each, but like there might be a kid, towards the bottom of the roster who might get, catch some, co- some coaches notice yeah. and get an offer. One, Cause you know, he was just on the phone with Louisville before. And I've talked to a lot of college coaches, a kid named Edwin Joseph that's at Chaminade with JJ and Jojo and Ryan Turner and Kenyatta Jackson. That was, you know, at Chaminade, this kid plays receiver and we put him at DB and he's unbelievable. He's got size speed. He's fantastic. And I'm tell, I, I told Mark Pantone, too. I said, Mark, and actually Hardline went to see him. Hardline said, I think he's really good at receiver. I said, yeah, but you got to see him play DB. And I think that's where his, where he's going to make his money and where he's going to be real, you know, great at. And, uh, you know, Ricky's, 
I know Ricky's every coach he talks to has been telling him, like, you guys are missing this kid. Like, this kid's the real deal. Go watch him. And, um, you know, so, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of kids that don't, you know, and we, you know, listen, we have a lot of five-star kids, but we also have kids that we think are four or five-star talent that don't have those ratings yet or rankings yeah. yet. So, you know, this the seven-on-seven has really helped. Yeah. R- Ricky, are there any coaches that take your evaluations? Because, again, like, when you guys say something – it's not BS. This isn't your first time on the block. You guys have seen, you know, a hundred five-star talents. So like, you know, are there certain programs and coaches that when you say, Hey, you guys need to take another look at this kid and maybe offer this kid. Did they really take notice to you when you say that? Because I always, you know, I respect your opinions. It's because like I said, you guys aren't, you guys are hip to the game. You guys have been around, you've seen what good players look like, how they act, how they carry themselves. Um, are there, are there certain programs that, that really listen when you talk, Ricky? I think Rick is sleeping. I think he's out. Rick, you, you there, big dog? He might, he might be asleep. Brett, I'll ask asleep. you. He's working uh, a night shift. I'll, I'll ask you the question, Brett. I mean, are there certain coaches that, like, when you say something, it really carries mega weight? Yeah, I mean, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, listen, coaches get these calls all the time. Oh, I have yeah. a kid that's really good. You know, people tell me, "Hey, Brett." Uh, my my cousin over at XYZ school, he's amazing, you know. And, and yeah, we've we've come to learn. Oh, look at there's that handsome guy. He's back. There's the ruler. Yeah, but, yeah. I think. I mean, yeah. I, I think. Yeah, they do. You know, I think it's. You know, and I never lie to schools about the kid's character or his ability. If he yep. can't play at Alabama, I'm not going to tell Alabama. If he can't play at Ohio State, I'm not going to tell Alabama Ohio State that he can play at Ohio State. I'm going to call my buddy at Toledo or something like that, where, you know, that's where they should be. You know, we're, you know, not every kid has to play at a big school to make the league. We all know that. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I think, yeah, I, I think that helps. Cause I think, you know, I kind of learned at the beginning when I got involved with this, I was trying to help AT and Sabino at the time, get some publicity. He was at a, he was at a high school where, um, you know, the co- I know the coach really well, great guy, he had a lot of he had four or five NFL guys that he coached prior, but, Spino wasn't getting the exposure yet, and I'm calling these colleges, and they're like, oh, God, here's another guy that says this kid is great. So it took, so, you know, yeah, you got to build up that credibility, and I think that's, we, we've done that. I think we've done a pretty good job of, you know, giving the right information to the, you know, to the coaches at these different schools. And Ricky, I used to talk to the coaches a lot more. Ricky does a lot of it now, but I, I think, again, when Ricky tells you a kid could play there, I, I think I think he's right about you know ninety percent of the time. Ricky, we got you yeah, back, man. You. Yeah, could you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. You sound okay. great. Yeah, I, I was just asking. You know, you've built up, you know, your word with a lot of these coaches, and you know, when you say a kid can play, he can really play. Um, are there certain programs that you know take that? Basically, you know, if Ricky says this kid's a five star, he's a five star. They offer. Um, you know, are, are there certain programs that you like to? to help more than others. I mean, I'm sure there are some that don't take you as seriously. There's some that absolutely love you, but uh, talk a little bit about building your word up and, and what it means to, to really, uh, you know, give your, give your evals and, and have them done honestly, like you do. Um, well, I guess, um, college is starting to see like, what we, like, like what we do at SFE, like we know talent. So like, if they mm-hmm. call me and say, Hey man, like what do you think about this guy? Well, give me an underrated guy or such and such, you know, I tell him a name. Like, I'm not going to tell him that a kid could play at Georgia when I know he can't. I just say, mm-hmm. you know, he's a group of five kids, Georgia State, maybe, maybe. Um, I lost him. I was Mario. Hello? Yeah, you're going to yeah. you now, bro. Okay, like, with it, when I told Coach Mario, I say, man, listen. I say, yeah, you're going out to a lot of uh, 23 guys. I say Edwin Joseph is a kid that you not you you don't want to miss. I mean, he doesn't have the hype as Brandon and Cornell. I say, yeah, he could play wide receiver, but he's sitting in that DB. I say, I watched the kid for like three years now. The kid can play. So I mean, you know, um, you know, they take my word, you know, for what it's worth. You know, they look at a kid, they evaluate the film, they say, okay, uh, you know, we we we'll keep watching, but um. Pretty much everything we really say, like they really take it in heed, and you know they 
Did they do their due diligence with it? Yeah, I love Kirk, it. To follow, Kirk, to follow up on that, these guys have helped me, you know, when I would be in, you know, national rankings meetings at 24-7 or at Scout, and Brett would tell me about a kid named Chris Lamonts. Remember, Brett, we just talked about him today. Yeah. Um, nobody had ever heard of Chris Lamonts, and Brett's like, this is a five-star kid. I don't care. We're, he's a five-star kid. He's going to play in the NFL for a long time. And Chris has been in the NFL how, how long now, Brett? I think five or six years now. Yeah. And he Chief. wasn't highly rated, oh. right? Huh? He wasn't highly rated. No, no. But you told me, and I fought to get him ranked as high as he did at Scout because you told yeah, me about I just saw his – he had such incredible athleticism. Right. And, you know, great uh, – you know, he was a DB, his hip movement – just speed and uh, you know uh, he didn't he didn't end up at Georgia or Bama. Where, did he go to South Carolina? South Carolina. Yeah, but he was better yep. than kids South who went Carolina. to Georgia and Bama. He was better than some Bama kids or Georgia kids. Yeah, yeah. No, he was. You know, again, some kids and and that's where we. You know, we have a lot of guys that are guys that make our team can all play at a pretty good high level, and we. You know, yes, we have the five stars, the Brandons, the JJs, the JoJo's, the Cornells, but we have, like you mentioned, Edwin Joseph, you know. I mean, these are really talented guys that, you know, just aren't getting the hype they deserve. And again, you know, we're not, we're never, we're not going to ruin our credibility by telling certain schools that this kid can play there and then they can't. And they're like, we're never going to listen to Brett or Ricky or anybody from South Florida Express. We're going to tell them the truth to who guys, you know. And again, some guys, we have, you have to project out, right? I mean, there's some guys mm-hmm. that we say, okay, this is what we have. Uh, I told Luke Fickle about a, a kid that we had this year. His dad played at Cincinnati. And I say, hey, Luke, you know, you, you should look at this kid. His dad played there. And, uh, I again, he needs a lot of work as a DB, but he's got size, speed. And I guess Luke looked into him. The kid committed there. And <laughs> uh, I was happy to see that because, again, not every kid is a superstar, and, and, and most kids, all these five-star kids, think they're going to step on the field right away and be a star at that school, which is not the case. You know, you got to wait yeah. your turn, or sometimes you do get lucky and you play right away. But you know, but there are some guys that need a little bit of work, and uh, you know, will be great a year or two down the road, or at least have a good chance of being what we think they should be. Yeah, I, uh, I I love that. So I'm, this is going to be my last question because I want to wrap this. I don't want you guys to be with me all night because I can I literally do this all night. Who's the best player that you guys have had on your roster that, quote, unquote, didn't oh, make oh, it oh. didn't make it to the league or didn't make oh. it big time that you thought was? It's not best player because I know you guys can go Teddy Bridgewater. You guys have had some guys that have made $100 million in the league. But I'm going to start with you, Ricky. Is there a kid that you're like, I bet everything that this kid's going to be a first-rounder, superstar and for whatever reason, you know, didn't pan out, didn't make a, a, a dent in college. Uh, who, be, who would who would that kid be for was, you? This was before my time, but Demar Dorsey. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, oh. wow! What yeah, was his DeMar background? Dorsey. So what was he? Uh, what position? He I, I've safety. never even heard of him. Safety. He was I got you. He was a five-star safety. Got it. Got it. What about you, Brett? Who you got? I have two guys. One did make it, but not in the... So the first one was Ivan McCartney, who okay. ended up going to West Virginia. Man, he was long and fast, great hands. He was phenomenal. And I just, you know, again, it's hard. And the second one, who who actually played on the same SFE team at the opposite side as receiver, was Quentin Dunbar, who went to Florida again. Another yep. six two, six three, long receiver, and never did much at Florida. And then he gets to an NFL camp. They flip him around the back pedal, and he's been in the league now five or six years as a corner. Started <laughs> with the Redskins. It's just crazy. And I thought he would be yeah. a really elite receiver with his skill set that he had. But those are the two that come to mind for me. Yeah, it's, it's hard sometimes because, you know, I always tell people, I'm like, look, I don't get excited about these kids until they prove they can handle college. Because a lot of these kids that get to college, you know, they got to 
you know, they still got, you know, they got to go to class, or whatever. But it's like, you know, there's a lot of part, there's a lot of partying, there's a lot of freedom. Yeah. They, they got money in their pocket now, which, you know, could be poisonous. Well, that's why so these guys. NIL thing. We're going to see how these kids act with money. Well, yeah, I mean, because a lot of these kids, you know, they show up and they, they got a habit. And all of a sudden they got 100 grand in their pocket. And it's like, what's going to happen to that habit? It's not going to get any worse. I mean, it's only going to get worse, you know? So, yeah, yeah I think, I think it's going to be, you know, a catastrophe for teams with bad cultures, like a catastrophe for kids that, are jealous, envious types. Cause you know, in the NFL, if you're on practice squad, you're making 175 grand. If you're on active roster, you're making 800 grand. So, you know, if Kyler Murray's making 60 million and you're making 800 grand, you're not starving. But you know, if you're a college kid and you know, CJ Stroud makes 2 million and has a G wagon and you're making a scholarship check and driving, you know, you know, an old, you know, 20 year old Honda Accord or something, it's not, you know, I, I worry about that dynamic a little bit because I, I think that it could get sour in a, in a hurry because these kids are so immature that, you know, they won't, you know, they just, they don't handle that kind of stuff well. I mean, do you, do you see some of that, Brett? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, like I was saying earlier, I think with NIL, it's going to be crazy. I, I really believe it can hurt, it can help programs, but I think it can hurt programs too. And uh, I think, you know, like, I would say a program like in Alabama, it would be great because I think there's a real discipline. Uh, it's a very disciplined program with great leadership. And Saban, if I don't care how good you are, he's got two guys that are just as good behind you. You know, I had a conversation with Mario Cristobal a couple weeks ago, and he was saying, I was asking, like, well, how do you keep your back and quarterback? Because the back and quarterback Miami is really good. But then you have Van Dyke. And I said, well, how do you, you know, Van Dyke will probably be gone, and then this kid will have a year or two. But how do you deal with the transfer portal? He said, you know what? That's why we got to build. We got to be one, two, and three deep. Because if somebody mm-hmm. leaves, we want to be stacked with talent. And, uh, you know, I, I think, I, again, the, the programs that – the coaches that can handle and be disciplined – and, and again, this, even from a small thing like SFE, we do not want I guys. We want we guys. We want guys that are selfless, that want to be a part of a really cool thing. And, again, we're going to see how some of these kids handle themselves with money at the college level. And I think it's going to be a real challenge for, you know, individual teams and coaches and, and the kids. It's a challenge for the kids. Yeah. You know, you have kids that maybe never had money, never been on their own. Now they're in college with money. So you have two issues. You have, a, not issues, but it could be issues. You have a kid that gets, and at sports or non-sports, a kid that goes to college for the first time and leaves mom and dad and now has to make big boy and girl decisions. And, you know, so you have that. And then on top of it, now you have a lot of money in your pocket and you can make bad decisions with money. And I think uh, it's going to be a real challenge for a lot of kids and a lot of programs, but you know, we'll see what happens. I hope it works out. I want to, I'm glad the kids are getting paid. I'm glad the kids are taking advantage of this. I, again, some programs are, uh, are, are really walking this gray area, but again, there's the rules are so broad and no one really knows the rules. So, you know, they're taking advantage of the situation and, uh, I think it's going to help some programs. Is it sustainable? That's what's going to, we'll see where it goes. Yeah. I just, I can't see that not being federally like legislated within two, three years. So they can kind of put a cap on this on Pandora's box. Uh, Yeah. I mean, listen, every, every sports organization, you know, on the pro level has a salary cap. So I I think that's what's going to happen. There's going to be a cap Mm -hmm. in some form or whatever to you know to make this a little more controlled and 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 uh and, and an even playing field i love it man i uh can i get a shirt can i get a south Florida express shirt if i order it from you you guys have you I, guys have a store we don't need to order it i we will send it to you want to hold i'd love i would love i i'd love a 3xl either a hoodie or just a t-shirt i mean i'll wear it when i work out i'll rock that we like will crazy. Get it. i, I love it you guys online picture with the cigar yeah i loved it Dude, I yes, love that. It, I mean, it's, it's genius. I mean, dude, I'm telling you, like, I, I was telling you guys, I'm going to make the Mid-Ohio Express, which is just my little jokey club that I'm going to have, you know, by myself. I'll be wearing my Mid-Ohio Express as my inside joke. Is we got to get JoJo. We got to get uh, JJ both up here. Um, 
But again, I know that this is a Saturday night. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate you too. Ricky, you still on my man? Ricky, you there, bro? Maybe. I don't he's think he's muted. there. He's muted, but Brett, I appreciate you, my man. Thank you so much. I, uh, you guys are the best, man. Take care of my boy, Bill, down there. He's, By he's the killing way, it right I now. By the way, decommitted. I'm hearing from a very reliable source, Bill Green, yeah. that uh, Dijon did commit, de decommit from Ohio State tonight. But again, we spoke about mm. it, and I hope people understand you know, why these things happen. You know, I mean, and again, anytime a kid can stay close to home and see his mom and dad, I just, you know, I don't, I never fault these kids. I had a single mom. She couldn't have afforded. I had a, I had a full ride to Stanford. I dreamed of going to Stanford, but like, I just couldn't leave her. You know, it's just one of yeah. those she couldn't afford to see me. So, Hey, yeah. I don't, I don't fault anybody. So, yeah, but I, yeah. uh, I'm going to wrap this fellas. I appreciate you guys so much. Let's do it again. Sometimes that sound good. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. Yeah, All right. Thank you. It. Hey, thank you bank. Appreciate you, brother. I know you're standing right there. So I appreciate you. My I got man. knocked off. But he no, got knocked off. But by the way, got, everyone will be come on anytime. If you want any of our players, I'm sure they'd be happy to come on and talk to you as well. Oh, I want to get Gino. Give me Gino. I want Gino and the ruler in a cage match. That'll be great. I, Gino and Ricky. I, <laughs> Gino and Ricky love to come on. Gino will definitely come on. And then you can ask uh, uh, Jeremiah Smith questions you want. Uh, uh, and, you know, Gino's been through the whole recruiting process with his uh, own son. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So he, you know, now he's going to go through it with his nephew uh, and his brother, who's you know uh, Jeremiah's dad. But uh, yeah, that we'll come on whenever you want, or any of our players will be happy to have what you have I, to put them on. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, Bank. Appreciate you, brother. You guys have a great night. Thank you. Thank fellas. you. We're gonna grab some milkshakes and cheeseburgers. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are. I'll see you, fellas. So right, we're gonna yeah. wrap this. We're gonna wrap this thing up. This was an amazing. Uh, this is a long one, but we had the bank. Thank you, Ricky Williams. Thank you, Brett Guest. Thank you, South Florida Express. You guys got the pipeline flowing. The five-star wide receiver talent is coming. If you guys want the scoop, we are the scoop. Buckeye Scoop, the number one site for inside information. Boards are going crazy. We just got a decommit notice live on the air, so it was a wild one. But appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Comment. What was your favorite part of the interview? Was it talking about kind of the ins and outs of NIL? Was it talking about Ennis, Tate, JJ, JoJo? We got some stars coming to Ohio State. I love it. Again, thank you, Scoop family. I appreciate you. Thank you, Buckeye Nation. You guys have a great rest of your day. Go Bucks.